brothers and sisters, good morning and welcome to this morning prayer coming to you from St. Mark's Anglican Church, Fisher Avenue. Assisting me this morning will be Brenda Zanin. There's just one shout out and that shout out goes to Inslee Campbell Clare. Inslee celebrated on the 12th of May. Happy birthday to my niece all the way there in Texas, and I hope you enjoy your day. Happy birthday to you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father for Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Rejoice then even in your distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. God has claimed us as his own. He called us from our darkness into the light of his day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of his peace, and bring the whole of creation to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
from the book of Ezekiel. In the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, I was among the exiles by the river Kebar. The heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. On the fifth day of the month, it was the fifth year of the exile of King Jehoiachin, the word of the Lord came to the priest Ezekiel, son of Uzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Kibar, and the hand of the Lord was on him there. As I looked, a stormy wind came out of the north, a great cloud with brightness around it, and fire flashing forth continually, and in the middle of the fire, something like gleaming amber. In the middle of it was something like four living creatures. This was their appearance. They were of human form. Each had four faces and each of them had four wings. Their legs were straight and the soles of their feet were like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like burnished bronze. Under their wings, on their four sides, they had human hands, and the four had their faces and their wings thus. Their wings touched one another. Each of them moved straight ahead without turning as they moved. As for the appearance of their faces, the four had the face of a human being, the face of a lion on the right side, the face of an ox on the left side, and the face of an eagle. Such were their faces. Their wings were spread out above. Each creature had two wings, each of which touched the wing of another, while two covered their bodies. Each moved straight ahead. Wherever the spirit would go, they went, without turning as they went. In the middle of the living creatures, there was something that looked like burning coals of fire, like torches moving to and fro among the living creatures. The fire was bright, and lightning issued from the fire. The living creatures darted to and fro like a flash of lightning. When they moved, I heard the sound of their wings, like the sound of mighty waters, like the thunder of the Almighty, a sound of tumult, like the sound of an army. When they stopped, they let down their wings, and there came a voice from above the dome over their heads. When they stopped, they let down their wings. And above the dome over their heads, there was something like a throne in appearance like sapphire. And seated above the likeness of a throne was something that seemed like a human form. Upward from what appeared like the loins, I saw something like gleaming amber, something that looked like fire enclosed all around. And downward from what looked like the loins, I saw something that looked like fire, and there was splendor all around. Like the bow in a cloud on a rainy day, such was the appearance of the splendor all around. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard the voice of someone speaking. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. The appointed Psalm, Psalm 47. You may join us in the refrain. God has gone up with a shout. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a cry of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is the great King over all the earth. God, God has, has gone, gone up with, with a shout. shout. He subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God, God has, has gone, gone up, up with, with a shout. shout. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn, 
Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. God God has gone gone up up with a shout. shout. For God is King of all the earth. Sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God God has gone 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 up up with with a a shout. shout. The nobles of the peoples have gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, and he is highly exalted. God God has has gone gone up up with with a shout. shout. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see... I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we are celebrating the Feast of the Ascension. If you follow your liturgical calendar closely, you would realize that this feast actually occurred on Thursday, and thus 40 days since Easter. When we think of Ascension, I'm sure there are many thoughts that will come to your mind. But permit me to share with you a story and to show the connection with this story to Ascension. I remember the days of slapping the television. I'm sure many folks can remember that in the 80s and the 90s some parts of the 90s as well. This was done many times because it was fuzzy, or you're trying to get it back on track, and sometimes out of frustration, you slap it to get it back on track. But during those days, I would also say they were the days of Star Trek. And I remember, as a child, there were two activities that took place for us. At one point, there was Sunday school in the afternoon at 3 p.m. Then after that, there was Star Trek. Now, let me be honest with you. I never liked science fiction. But that was the era when you, you either take it or you just leave it because you had no other choice than to watch what was being shown. No other channels were available. And sometimes out of frustration and afraid of being bored to death, you would just engage in whatever was shown. But I remember Star Trek, and one or two things I remembered about it. There were some characters, and we remember them. There was Scotty. Montgomery, there was Mr. Spock, and there was Captain Kirk, who was in charge of this starship enterprise. But there was a catchphrase that still lives on even to this date. And that catchphrase was when Captain Kirk wanted to be transported or teleported back to the Starship, he would say, beam me up. Beam me up. 
and defying logic, defying science, defying everything, suddenly this silhouetted person would just appear and then gradually turned into a whole fleshy person. For someone who didn't like science fiction, I surely remembered a lot about it. But that catchphrase has, took on, has taken on a life of itself. And that life can be seen in the way in which it is defined, used, interpreted even to this day. Some people use it to say they want to escape from reality. Some people say they are in a tough position and I want to be relieved of what I'm going through. Some people just use it in a colorful, dramatic way. But how can we apply this to the gospel? I would be tempted, and I am tempted, and I will be tempted in using it in this way, and some people might not like how I'm using it. Just imagine back on the day of ascension, Jesus saying to God the Father, beam me up. And then almost as if he just ascends into orbit or wherever, he is beamed up. But why beamed up? Why was he beamed up? I believe he was beamed up. Not because of all of the color, as, in, as you see in the Old Testament reading from Ezekiel, a very colorful story. As you see in the gospel, a very colorful story. A lot of drama with symbols and music and, and, and different characters involved. The story of beam me up is more than that. What we can say this story is about the continuity of the kerygma. The kerygma, the proclamation of the message, the proclamation of the gospel. And how does Jesus do it for us? Jesus presents in this story the kerygma in this way. He speaks about the past, the present, the future. And he's saying his message is to always be proclaimed regardless of the time we're in. But he also does something else. And you must have an attentive eye to see what he was doing. He said to them, them, T-H-E-M. Why did he stress them? Because them referred actually only to the 11 disciples, not the 12. Because remember, Judas decided to do his own thing, to go contrary to the expectations of Christ. And so therefore he was speaking to them, the eleven, and in speaking to the eleven he was saying, my message, this kerygma, must even be proclaimed in situations that are incomplete. Incompleteness is saying to us, that even in that messiness, the kerygma can be so powerful and so wholesome in that incompleteness. It reminds us that within the body of Christ, many times, things are not always smooth. And if you say things are always smooth, you're not being honest. But yet still within that rough spot, yet still within that messiness, the kerygma, the proclamation, must be heard and seen. Beam me up. Also says, according to Luke's gospel, that there must be this continuity in proclaiming, in giving out the kerygma, Jesus says, in suffering, in death, and even in my messiahship. In other words, if you look at all of these terms, suffering, which can be considered negative or positive, 
all based upon perspective. Death, the same in Messiah, leadership, joy, the anointing. He is saying, amidst our lives, we must seek that balance in all things. We must seek to hear his voice amidst the competing forces. Someone said to me just recently that COVID is such a horrible thing. But he said there's one thing that COVID has caused him to do and he had not done for quite a while. He said for the past months, he's been able to truly, honestly, objectively reflect upon his life. He said it caused him to look at some areas he had just totally buried, and he pretended as if these parts did not exist. But he said it caused him, it gave him that opportunity to engage in serious, serious meditation, reflection upon his own life. Beam me up. Also says it is an opportunity to proclaim the resurrection of our Lord. And in this resurrection it says, Christ is given us the greatest form of continuity. Continuity that surpasses all other people's form of continuity. A continuity which says then that we can live through COVID because we know that eventually there's something better. We can live through our messiness because we know that we will also share in this resurrection. But in this continuity, until this resurrection occurs, Christ says the kerygma must be preached and it must take on the form of repentance. And repentance here does not mean simply say, I am sorry. Saying the words may be indeed very easy, but are you living the words? Are you doing the words? Are you living a life of repentance? And Christ says this repentance must start first with ourselves. As he demonstrates here in Jerusalem and then it spreads out. And then it brings into focus all of God's people. My brothers and sisters in Christ. Why do you want to be beamed up? When you say beam me up, what do you mean? If we look at the gospel again, the gospel of Luke begins with the temple scene, with Zechariah, the story about the birth of John the Baptist, etc. And there was great joy in the final analysis at the birth of Zechariah. But then Luke does something which is very smart. Luke also ends his story in the temple. And by doing so, Luke says, if the kerygma is proclaimed with genuineness of heart, then there is joy in the life of the saints. The question to you, question to me, why do you want to be beamed up? And when you are beamed up, are you willing to proclaim the kerygma of our Lord? My brothers and sisters in Christ, may God give us the strength this ascension time, not just to look at the fanciful nature of beaming up, but also to look at the message of continuity of the charisma of Christ. Amen.
us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers today, let us as we have done for the past few weeks, remember India. We remember their pain, their heartache, their suffering. Remember all leaders of India as they are called to bring an end to the suffering of their people. Remember political leaders medical professionals, frontline workers of every kind. We remember them at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now have the prayers of the people by Brenda. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Today, we remember the moment when the resurrected Jesus departed from his disciples one last time and ascended into heaven. On his instruction, they remained in Jerusalem awaiting the mysterious power he had promised them. Were they bereft and fearful, having seen their dear friend vanish from their sight and staying put in a place where they were hunted men? They were not. Rather, they proceeded with great joy. Father, may we, like them, hold the promise of Jesus in our hearts as we face the unknown, confident that our Savior will provide his strength and power in our time of need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we join our sisters and brothers around the world in prayer and worship. We pray for your church, that it may nourish our faith and equip us to be your disciples in service to others. We pray especially for our church leaders in the Anglican Church of Canada, Linda, our primate, Anne, our metropolitan, Shane, our bishop, Julian, our priest, and all who minister here at St. Mark's. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all in authority that they may be effective leaders and serve their communities with wisdom and compassion. We ask your blessing on all who are playing their part in the battle against the coronavirus. Sustain them in their efforts, and when they find moments of rest, refresh them for the continued journey. Inspire all of us to do our part so that we may put this challenge behind us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, pour down your healing strength on all who are in sorrow, need, or any other adversity. We remember our brothers and sisters in India and other parts of the world where the pandemic is especially severe. We pray also for those who are untouched by the virus itself, but whose lives are turned upside down by its secondary consequences. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who have died and all who mourn their passing. Receive the departed into your heavenly kingdom where sorrow and pain are no more, only love. Bring comfort to the bereaved, so that they may know joy and wholeness once again. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
Gracious God, you have made us fellow citizens with the saints in the city of your eternal light. In the time of storm, when the foundations shake, teach us to wait in silence on your steadfast and transforming love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name, name thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Ascended Lord, we thank you for the many rooms that you have prepared for us. We thank you for ensuring that we can spend eternity with you. We thank you that you have not left us as orphans, because the Holy Spirit is here walking alongside of us. Your word says that if, we, that if you had not prepared a place for us, you would not have told us so. Therefore, on this Ascension Sunday, we thank you for sending your Son so that we may share one day in that eternal place. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Rest, remain, and abide with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.